In this question on circle theorems, we are told that in the diagram, MNPQ, this MNPQ is defining a circle with center O and then line MN is equal to line NP. So, this is MN and this is MP. You can see they are being notched together, okay? They are, both of them are notched to show that they are of the same length and then angle OMN is 50 degrees. Yeah, OMN is 50 degrees. We are asked to find angle MNP and angle POQ. So in the first case, we are asked to find angle MNP. So what we are looking for is angle MNP. And if you look at the diagram, MNP. So this is the angle in question. Let me just show that in red. This is the angle in question. And I can call that angle X. So I can say my MNP is equal to X from the diagram. Okay. And then how do we go about solving this particular question to find the value of x this is where we need to bring in our ingenuity and understanding of circle theorems and every other practical laws that we can bring into play to solve this question now looking at the question originally we are told that mmpq is a circle with center o but that's not the only thing we can say about mmpq if you are not defining mmpq along the part of the circumference we can also define it along these straight lines in which we are having a polygon with four sides and that is forming a cyclic quadrilateral. What is the meaning of that? That means a polygon with four sides that is inscribed in a circle. So we call it a cyclic quadrilateral. And if I want to just show that, I will just start from M again. We have M, N, P and Q. You can see that's the top sides and then here we are having the four sides. So that is a cyclic quadrilateral and there's a property that we are going to make use of that the opposite angles of cyclic quadrilateral are supplementary so we need to note this opposite angles of cyclic quadrilateral are supplementary i'm just writing this in short notes i know you'll be able to follow through so if you are to apply this particular theorem how do we go about applying it in this particular case we need to identify the opposite angles of this cyclic quadrilateral it has four sides one two three four so what is the side facing this particular um 50 degrees angle it is this particular angle okay so we can say angle q m n q m n plus the angle opposite it, that is angle QPN, angle QPN, both of them add up to 180 degrees, okay? And in the same vein, look at the angle we are looking for, MNP, which is X. Let me just write it is, as angle MNP plus the other angle MQP, MQP. They also add up to 180 degrees following this particular postulate that opposite angles of cyclic quadrilateral are supplementary okay so that's the first thing i want us to note the second case look at this just take a look at this the diameter of the circle from what we are looking at in the diagram happens to be the line mq so we are told that o is the center of the circle and you can see this is a straight line starting from one end of the circumference, passing through the center, and going to the other end of the circumference. So, that is the diameter of this particular circle. But, we are also seeing that that diameter is subtending an angle at P. Okay? So, from M to Q, you can see M, P, Q, in which M, Q is the diameter. And there is another term for the circle that we are told that the angle we are told that angle subtended at the circumference at circumference of a circle by diameter is a right angle is 90 degrees that's what it means by is a right angle the angle subtended by the diameter of a circle at the circumference is a right angle it is 90 degrees that means that what we have here is this angle is going to give us 90 degrees okay that is this other postulate 
that is giving us that information. Okay. Then, in the question, we are told that line MN is equal to line NP. So, MN here and NP, they are equal. And what is the implication on that? From the triangle MNP, MNP, we can see that this particular angle and this particular angle, they are going to be equal. So, if I call this A, this will also be A. Why? Because they are base angles of an isosceles triangle. Isosceles because two of its sides are equal and then the base angles are also going to be equal. So, I can say this is A, this is A. I can say angle NMP is equal to angle NPM and that is A. I denoted that as A, alright? And then, all of these, how are they going to help me to solve this particular question? I know that this is angle 90 degrees now, alright? And I know that the sum of this angle, 50 here, and this angle, they are going to be supplementary. They will add up to 180 degrees. That will allow me to find the angle A. If I know this particular angle A, I can actually use this particular triangle that I said is isosceles to sum the angles of this triangle, which I also know to be 180 degrees. And since I know A, I can find this A also. Of course, the, both of them are A. I can add 2a to x to equate them to 180 degrees to solve for the value of x. That's why I'm actually postulating all of this. And from what I've been saying all along, that means that I can say QMN angle QMN plus angle QPN, QPN, which are opposite angles of the cycle correlateral they add up to 180 degrees. Now, what is QMN? QMN will be given to be 50 plus QPN. Now, look at QPN. QPN happens to be this 90 plus this A. That's the beauty of what we need to actually apply here. 90 plus A, which is QPN. QPN. It is this right angle, this 90 degrees plus this particular A here. So, the sum of the three. Is 180 degrees such that a will be 180 minus 50 plus 90 is 140 so a is nothing but 40 degrees good and interesting so i have my a to be 40 degrees i cannot look at this triangle mnp to say from from triangle mnp i know that the sum of angles of a triangle is 180 degrees so i can say the sum of angles is going to give me 180 degrees and summing the angles i can say that means that x plus a plus a you can see x a and d they are the angles of the triangle mnp the three of them is 180 degrees and in that case x will be 180 degrees minus 2a because a plus a is 2a and that is going to give me my solution that x is equal to 180 degrees minus the value of a that we got was what was 40 so x is 180 minus 2 times 40 is 80 and 180 minus 80 is 100 degrees so the value of x which is angle mnp that we have to find is nothing but 100 degrees and you can see how we are able to find it because we look at the cyclic quadrilateral and we also look at the isosceles triangle and then we look at the fact that the angle subtended by a diameter and the circumference of the circle is a right angle and bringing these three together we are able to postulate and apply the application of these theorems to get the solution to angle mnp as 100 degrees so we can now move on to angle poq okay so yeah, in this second question, we have to look for angle POQ, okay? And POQ, what is POQ? This is POQ. Is this angle here that we are looking for now? Let me call that angle Y. So I can say it's angle Y, all right? So that I will not be confused just writing POQ and POQ. Now, there are quite a number of ways that we can apply to solve for this particular question. But first, let's just identify some other things. 
looking at this triangle, we can notice that here, from the center of the circle to any point of the circumference, any straight line drawn from the center of the circle to any point of the circumference is going to constitute the radius of the circle. So, this line OQ is the radius. This line OP is also another radius. Okay, so OQ and OP constitute the radius of the triangle. Okay, this triangle OQP. And if that is the case, then I can know that the base angles of this triangle are also going to be equal. So this angle here, this angle, if I call this um, B, then this angle here, here, it's also going to be B. Why am I saying that? Because they are the base angles of this isosceles triangle. So I can just state that out that angle OQ P is equal to angle OPQ and I'm denoting that as B and I'm calling them the base angles of isosceles triangle OPQ. Okay, they are the base angles of the isosceles triangle OPQ. But you recollect that we have gotten the value of x to be 100 degrees. Now, MNP, just look at this now, angle MNP plus angle MQP, MQP, if you are observant, we will see that they are also opposite each other. This is the circle quadrilateral, so MNP, this X, and MQP, this B, they will add up to 180 degrees because they are supplementary. So, MNP is x so this is x plus mqp is b and the sum of the two is 180 degrees so our b will be 180 minus x and from our previous question we have gotten x to be 100 so angle b is 180 degrees minus 100 degrees and that is nothing but 80 degrees so b here is 80 degrees but looking at the triangle o q p but from triangle OQP, we can sum the angles in that triangle to say Y plus B plus B is equal to 180 degrees. Why am I saying that? Y, B, and B, they are the angles in that particular triangle. And we know that the sum of angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. So, Y will be 180 minus 2b and that is nothing but 180 minus 2 times 80 and that will be 180 minus 2 times 80 is 160 degrees so y which is the angle poq that we are looking for is nothing but 180 minus 160 is 20 degrees now this is what i want you to note students there are so many ways you could have gone ahead to solve these questions it just depends on your ingenuity of how to identify the theorems that you need to use. So I could have said, yeah, this angle here is going to be 2x because it is going to be twice the angle subtended at the circumference that we have at the center. But look at not something. Both of them are facing the same side. X is facing here and here in the middle is also facing here. Okay, so this is 2x and 2x is going to be 200. All right. Now, that 200 that we just got, we can see that it is the angle on the straight line, on the straight line MQ, which is 180, that is adding to this Y plus Y, that is giving us this particular 200 degrees that we got as 2X. And if that is the case, we can say that Y is nothing but 200 minus 180. And look at it. Is that not the same answer? Of course, that is also going to give us 20 degrees. So, there are just so many ways. You just need to master all the theorems of the circle theorems. Then you need to understand the circle quadrilateral. You need to understand the properties of an isosceles triangle. And you'll be able to solve questions like this. There is no particular single way to solve. There are just many ways. This is just another method. I should. There are so many other ways I could have choose to say, you know, I also want to apply this. But the thing is that you need to practice. The more you practice, the better you become. And that's why you should just 
check our playlist to develop your proficiency in solving questions like this and then you'll be able to dust them in your exam and gain that excellence all right